If you are a flat earther, then it is more than likely that you are also a space denier. And if you are a space denier, then you will almost certainly believe that the ISS is not real. And today, a new one of these ISS deniers has joined the Anti-Space League. He's from Canada, and his name is James Mann. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Four Tuesday with me, Simon and Dan, thank you very much for joining me. I know I said at the end of Friday's episode that we were going to look at Jupiter today, but this came along and I simply had to respond. So James Mann is your typical P900 flat earth deceiver and he's made a video about the ISS. He feels that it simply does not exist and you absolutely cannot see it from the earth's surface. Let's show him a thing or two, shall we? Yes, and I would be one of them. Something that bright and moving that fast can only be the ISS. Always oh, going to show us why we can't see the ISS from the ground. Bless him. Right, well, how would you explain this? And this. And this. Or even this, which was taken by Geronism, a flat earther no less. Let's just keep in mind here that this is the scale we're talking about here when we say 200 to 250 miles up. It looks like it is barely off the surface of Earth. Why would you do this though? The ISS is not a giant red rectangle. And you aren't normally trying to pick it out against the coloured background. I think I already know where he's going with this, but let's see him hoist himself with his own petard. And why would it be visible? It's a red rectangle the size of a football field from 25 miles away. If you'd have asked me the outcome of this before you started, I probably would have predicted that. Yes, let's keep going to prove nothing whatsoever at all and to make ourselves look incredibly intellectually deceitful. So 
So James Mann thinks that this is excellent evidence as to why we can't see the ISS from the Earth's surface. I think it's complete rubbish, and I'll tell you why. Let's take a quick look at her, shall we? Now, as you can see, the ISS is predominantly solar panels, and these are highly reflective. My point is that when sunlight reflects off these solar arrays, the ISS is practically a beacon in the sky. The reason the red rectangle is an awful example is because it's not a light source. You can see a candle with the naked eye on a dark night from a mile away. Even in the day, you wouldn't be able to see a red rectangle the same size as the candle flame with your eye from the same distance. The ISS is a bright light source, the size of a football field with an angular size of approximately 40 arc seconds. That is larger than the angular size of Jupiter, and we can see that quite fine. So James Mann, I'd be very interested to hear your explanation as to what this really is. I'll await your answer. No, your journey to the truth was a 3am rabbit hole on YouTube, wasn't it? They are still heroes, whether you like it or not. Oh, I bet it did, James. And I guess that's where the P900 comes into it. Yeah, about that blowing the globe out of the waterproof. Next month, I'll be completely destroying it. Otherwise known as misunderstanding physics. Oh, I will, James. I will. Right, that brings this episode of Tim for Tuesday to a lovely close and another ISS and space denier really nicely dealt with. Oh, and talking of the ISS, be sure to catch my ISS Lego build on Friday. Right, thank you all very much for watching today. If you enjoyed it, then please, please do like and subscribe. It'd be thoroughly appreciated. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week and I'll see you all Friday for the ISS Lego build. See you then.